Missouri Governor Ron DeSantis made a huge spectacle of having a state go after voter fraud. Except in the cases of people in Republican areas. Oops. Uh, now, what do I mean? Well, there's a recent report in the Orlando Sentinel showing that a Republican state attorney had declined to prosecute six alleged voter fraud cases back in May that happened to involve Republican voters, or at least uh, voters in Republican areas. Uh, so now, these circumstances, by the way, of these particular voters uh, were pretty similar to cases later brought against 20 uh, additional people uh, by Governor Ron DeSantis's election police unit and statewide prosecutors allied to DeSantis. So now the office of State Attorney Bill Gladson, whose district includes the villages and five Republican counties, confirmed that six convicted sex offenders in Lake County had indeed voted illegally in the 2020 general election according to a determination letter obtained by the Orlando Sentinel. However, unlike the 20 also uh, mixture of sex offenders uh, and other people that are ineligible to vote under Florida's laws, uh, they have been, uh, 20 of them arrested in Democratic counties. And of course, um, these uh, people were, again, arrested, uh, put in jail, and had... a uh, the state try to bring charges against them. But in the case of these six sex offenders in the villages and five other Republican counties, they refused to go after them. Mm. Oh, prosecute, liberal prosecutors not doing their jobs. Oh, wait, these are Republican prosecutors. Gladson and the staff concluded that these cases should not be prosecuted because the fraud was not willful. Which again, it, it's the same argument that you can make against the other uh, 20 offenders in Democratic counties that were arrested that also said, hey, we were eligible to vote. We were told we were able to vote. We were told we were eligible. And so we voted. And it turns out we weren't. We didn't willfully break these laws. We, we thought that we could. So this is the exact same, this case, uh, same case. Uh, now, as I mentioned, 20 people living in majority Democratic counties were arrested by the Office of Election Crimes and uh, Security last August. Each of them had voted despite being convicted of a felony sex offense or a murder, which would make them ineligible to have their voting rights restored under Amendment 4. They were each, however, cleared to cast a ballot by the state and were given voter ID cards, just as those identified as having voted illegally in Gladson's district. Roger Whedon, a lawyer representing the two of the people who were arrested by DeSantis' election police, which is insane that we even have this, uh, says said that it seems that sex offenders in Lake County could have, uh, have been given a pass, while those in majority Democrat counties were not. Hmm, gee, I wonder why. Hmm. Oh, well, I think we know why, obviously. According to an annual report by the Florida Department of State released in January, they said that there were nine pending investigations and seven preliminary investigations into unqualified electors willfully voting in Gladstone's district. However... There were no uh, arrests. There were no charges. There was nothing like that. Unlike, again, what happened to these 20, uh, in some cases, black voters in Democratic counties who said that were, uh, who were told that they could vote, but were, again, not actually eligible. In fact, in the decision in Gladson's Red District, they came to the conclusion in this 2020 determination letter, in all the instances where sex offenders voted, each appear to have been encouraged to vote by various mailings and misinformation. They were led to believe they could legally vote in the election. The evidence fails to show willful actions on the part of these individuals. Therefore, the state is unable to file charges. So uh, that looks to be, uh, you know, uh, I mean, clearly political. When, again, they, they said this about sex offenders who were not able, not eligible to vote in these re Republican districts. Versus, again, 20 in Democratic districts who they arrested. So, uh, now, State Representative Michael Gottlieb, a Fort Lauderdale attorney who was representing an ex-felon arrested back in August, said, quote, individuals throughout the state should be treated in a similar fashion. And so this just sort of highlights the inequities of the system. True. 
uh, individuals in this case were chosen not to be prosecuted and the other defendants were prosecuted. There's something wrong with that, especially when we're using a state police force for political prosecutions. Now, that's very, very important because that's what's happening in Florida right now. Political prosecutions. Robert Barr, uh, an attorney representing a Miami man whose voter fraud case had been dismissed, said, quote, laws of the state of Florida, as well as the United States, are designed to protect everybody equally. How can some people be prosecuted and others not? Theoretically, everyone is entitled to equal protection under the law. Theoretically, yes, but remember, we're in Ron DeSantis land now. Uh, and so, of course, <laughs> I mean, it's not going to work that way. Republican voter fraud has been ignored in Florida. They're only claiming that it's Democrats doing the voter fraud, when in reality, uh, all the people in this case were lied to uh, and told they could vote when they didn't. But uh, look, I've also talked about the villages. It's kind of infamous at this point where you have, uh, again, a, a, a lot of Republican voters in that area um, being uh, you know, arrested for voter fraud, being charged for voter fraud. Very obvious, writing in, uh, you know, uh, voting several times, writing in their dead relatives or dead, you know, wives in, in one case. <laughs> Uh, and then claiming that they were disenfranchised. A again, it, this is this is what's going on. This is what's happening. Uh, it's not the left. It's not the Democrats that are doing the voter fraud. It is a very, very small group, a very tiny minority of Republicans that are doing the majority of the very, again, minuscule amounts of voter fraud that actually happened in this country. Uh, once again, you are much more likely to get struck by lightning or have a vending machine fall on your head than uh, to commit uh, in-person voter fraud. I mean, that's just uh, that's just the statistics. That's just the reality. It, it's such an infinitesimally small amount of voter fraud that happens in this country that is actually proven, legitimately proven. And so, turns out we have systems in place that prevent voter fraud. And actually, one of the systems is kind of unintentional. It's created through voter apathy and making it actually more difficult to vote than it should, not automatically registering people to vote, uh, having, you know, these uh, registration, uh, you know, deadlines and uh, voter suppression, things like that. And so, contrary to the propaganda that you might actually see from actually convicted fraudsters, there is no mass voter fraud. It's just not reality. You're living in a completely different world and wanting to see exactly what you want to see if you believe in this stuff. You've got to get back to reality. Yeah, you have to escape. You have to escape the, the weirdo right-wing matrix. <laughs> um, so now, Mark Rankin, a, a criminal defense attorney representing one of the arrested ex-felons, also said that the cases brought by DeSantis's election police, again, uh, an incredibly scary idea, uh, are all nothing but political theater by the governor. Quote, the cases are, uh, are being brought by the statewide prosecutor's office for a reason, because most local elected state attorneys would have refused to bring these cases because the defendants are not guilty of any crimes and because they're focused on real crimes that affect the community rather than political prosecutions meant to get headlines on Fox News. The Sentinel piece also points out that these cases against Democratic voters are being pursued by the Office of Statewide Prosecution led by Attorney General Ashley Moody, an ally of Ron DeSantis who supported efforts to overturn the 2020 presidential election because, of course, she did. According to its website, the Statewide Prosecution Office focuses on, quote, complex, often large scale, organized criminal activity. Really? Have they found any? Well, I would be very, very surprised uh, if they did. Uh, in fact, um, of the 20 initial voter fraud cases taken up by Moody's office, most of them have been either thrown out or ended up in plea deals in which defendants were able to walk away with no criminal penalties. Oops. Since the initial arrest, the election police unit has made four, only four other arrests, according to an annual report uh, by the Department of State. So we know what this is. We know what's going on. 
This is red meat for the base. This is red meat for DeSantis's incredibly uh, racist base. So he can sit there and claim he's fighting for election integrity. In reality, we know that it's bullcrap. Turns out you can't actually fight for integrity if you don't actually have any.